Hey everyone, Courtney Marlin here, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over how you can sign your first client as an agency owner. I get this question so much, and I see so many agencies start and then hit this roadblock and never recover. I just thought I'd record one video and answer it once and for all. So let's get into it. So in this video, I'm going to be going through this little doc I put together and really just answering three questions or just discussing three topics that I think would make the difference for you. The first is service market fit. The second is frozen blue and red oceans. And the third is just fishing where the fish are. Um, and it seems super, super simple, but I promise you, if you give me the next 10 minutes, this will substantially change your agency. So let's talk about service market fit. And yes, you get product market fit, and I pretty much just changed that to service market fit. But basically what this is talking about is majority of you, I think, are selling bricks to men in suits. So let me explain that better and kind of explain what this funny diagram is. There's this story of a man who basically had a wagon with a bunch of red bricks. And he was kind of going around New York City uh, trying to sell these bricks to like lawyers and hedge fund managers and things. And of course, no one was buying. And this man was absolutely the best salesperson in the world. He knew every sales tactic. He knew all of the ways to change your tone. He knew like every high pressure tactic, like in the book, hands down, best salesperson, but he still could not make any sales. And that's basically because no one wanted his red bricks, okay? And so what this is really talking about is make sure you sell something that someone actually wants. And I feel like that's so, so simple. But uh, I see a lot of agencies who are selling services to companies that genuinely just don't need it. Like I recently spoke with someone who was, or he thought he was going to try and sell Facebook ads to construction companies. And I really just asked him, most construction companies just want to make more sales. When was the last time you saw an ad in your Facebook feed or Instagram feed about construction and you clicked on it and then you just bought like a $3,000, $4,000 construction, you know, add on to your house. Like it just doesn't make sense for that type of business. Um, and so how do you answer this question or how do you achieve service market fit? And let's talk about the A to B uh, bridge. And I'm going to pull up my whiteboard here. But basically, you need to just figure out that majority of your clients are over here. This is their current situation and uh, they want to get to B. This is their desired situation. And in between is basically your agency. OK, and so what you really need to do is just figure out what their desired situation is, where they want to be and how you can create a service that can take them from their desired to their uh, ideal or goal situation and really just make your service make sense. Like, honestly, um, I, I, it sounds so, so simple, but a lot of people miss this. And um, I also think it's, it's very important to note that most people will only consider paying money for one of these three things in return. So again, we have uh, inputs over here, okay? And we have outputs over here. And so the input is people pay money and what do they get out of it? The only time someone will probably see value in your service is if the output is one of these things, more money. So this would be more clients, more customers, more sales, uh, time saving. In other words, you've saved them time. Uh, let's say for example, you are doing uh, transcription as a service because I know some agencies do that. People basically send you videos and then you basically take the video and you transcribe it into text. Technically, the person who did the video themselves could do that but it just wouldn't be worth their time. So you either help them make more money or you save them time or you increase their social status. And this increase in social status would be things like personal trainers. Um, the input is, you know, you pay them money, but the output is you get bigger, stronger, faster, all of these things, which helps you attract more, you know, men or women or whatever you're looking for and just live a healthier, stronger life, right? So increase in social status. So super important that you make sure that your service or offer does one of these three things and then just be super honest with yourself and say if i sell my service to this company and they buy it will they actually get one of these three things and even more is it very very clear and possible for me to track the money that i'm making them the time that i'm saving them or the increase in social status like personal trainers you can measure the increase in their biceps or something like that and you must be able to show that for them to continue uh, to be willing to pay you so again please stop selling bricks to men in suits, right? Super simple. The next thing is frozen blue and red oceans. There's an amazing book uh, called Blue Ocean Strategy, which basically encapsulates this topic. I just added to it by coming up with a frozen ocean as well. So let me just talk about quickly what blue and, and uh, red oceans are. So think about an ocean with a bunch of fish and those fish would be your potential customers. 
and then think about the sharks in the ocean eating the fish. Those would be businesses. And so the whole point of the book is you wanna choose blue oceans where there's a lot of fish, not a lot of sharks. The sharks can easily find the fish and eat the fish and everyone's you know winning. A red ocean is the opposite. The red ocean is where there might be a lot of fish, but there's also a ton of sharks or there's a ton of sharks and not many fish left. And so because there's so much blood in the water from all these sharks eating the fish, the ocean goes red. Okay, and this basically is just talking about, you know, choose markets where there isn't so much competition that you can still grow. I added to that concept and I added what I would call a frozen ocean. A frozen ocean is kind of like fish who are in your market, but they don't know it yet. And that's really talking about this point. When you choose your market, I think it's super important that you understand that you don't want to be educating prospects on the results of your service. So for example, there are tons of businesses in the world that could benefit from Facebook ads, but they might just not know it yet, okay? So for example, one of the examples that I give here is, think of a fire installing company, right? A fireplace installer. They most likely could benefit from not Facebook, but Google ads, because people would Google fireplace installations, you know, in my local area. Your ad would show up at the top, it would take them to a page, they fill it out to get a free quote. Then someone phones them and says, hey, uh, you know, can I come to your house, measure, whatever, make you an offer, things like that. The issue is majority of the people in that business or in that line of work, in that niche, probably have never heard of this before. Like it's a very, very untapped niche or untapped market. And so in my opinion, that's almost a market that's too blue. It's frozen almost to the sense where it's not about you proving yourself as being the best for the service. It's more about you actually just convincing them that the service is actually going to work. And I think that that's very difficult because now you're basically trying to convince someone that Facebook or Google ads work or whatever your service is, instead of convincing them that it will work for them and that you have these case studies and things to back it up. So I would just be wary of choosing frozen markets where it's, it's kind of too frozen or red markets where there's too much competition. You wanna kind of sit in the middle and be in a market where the fish are educated enough to know that your service works They've seen a couple results of some of their competitors or friends or whatever uh, who are actually getting results with the servers, but there isn't that many agencies in the space where it's so competitive and so bloody and everyone's price cutting themselves and all these things. And uh, this talks about why I don't think it's a good idea uh, in today, 11th of May, 2022, to start a Facebook ads agency specifically for e-com businesses. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about that more in a little bit. But anyone, um, another thing is if no one has had success before you, you most likely won't either. And again, like I want to be super, super realistic with you and honest. This is again talking about a frozen ocean. If you choose a market, I highly encourage you to do a lot of Googling to see or look for case studies of other businesses or other people who've gotten results in that market or niche with the service you are potentially offering. And if you can't find any, I'm talking, you can't find any YouTube videos about it. You can't find any blog articles where, you know, they were in this position, they implemented this service and then now they're there. That's a really, 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 really big red flag because that's a strong indication that it's a frozen market. And yes, a lot of people would say, but you know, if you're the first person to get to the market, that's amazing because you can charge as much as you want. You have almost no competition, all of these things. And yeah, first movers advantage is a real thing. A lot of companies have made billions by being first movers. And so I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying when you do that, you are taking on a lot of risk. And um, if it's your first time building a business, which for many of you it is, uh, and you know this is what you're trying to quit your job, leave university, do something with, I just don't think taking on that amount of risk is smart unless you have you know millions in the bank or you've got a lot of experience because you've sold another company or something like that, right? In my opinion. And the third thing is fishing where the fish are. So have a look at this picture. Super simple, you can see the dude's you know, fishing, but all the fish are on the other side kind of looking at him wondering, what are you doing? And uh, he's sitting here very miserable and uh, he's, he's catching no fish. So every day I speak to agencies trying to get their first customers and all of them are doing uh, like email outreach. They're all doing LinkedIn, they're doing Facebook, they're doing all these things. And they're wondering why is it not working? Because there's so many people getting results. And I wanna to say to this that every single outreach method works. Facebook outbound works, uh, LinkedIn outbound, email outbound, all of these things work, but it might not work for you because of the niche or service that you're offering. 
And so this really comes down to, you have to know your ICP, right? Which is your ideal client profile. You have to know what is the types of people you're trying to sell to and the companies that they own, and then put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself where they'd be spending time. So the best example that I can give, and, and please, because I know a lot of you probably are in this position and I'm not trying to like attack you or bash you. I just want to be super valuable uh, and super honest. But I know a lot of people who are trying to sell to e-com businesses on LinkedIn. And I just don't understand why. And uh, I see them not getting results because if you really think about it, most people who own like a Shopify store, um, usually if you're a beginner agency, you're probably targeting people who their Shopify brand is probably like a one person team, maybe two, three with a couple of VAs. How many Shopify owners do you know of who also spend a lot of time on LinkedIn? Probably none. And I used to own a bunch of e-com brands, dropshipping, private label. I used to do that. And I never had a LinkedIn profile because like, what would I do with it, right? Like most people who run Shopify brands have never heard of LinkedIn or just don't use it, right? LinkedIn is primarily for some of your more corporate based jobs, lawyers, doctors, dentists, that type of thing, or very established e-com businesses, which if you're a first time agency, you're probably not chasing after those people anyways. So really ask yourself like, where are they? So for me, uh, when I've got my first couple clients for my agency, I know that Shopify has a conference in cities uh, once a quarter, or at least they used to. I don't know what they do now because of COVID. This was a long time ago, but basically I was living in London and every three months Shopify used to have a Q&A, uh, like a round table in London where you could go and you could ask some of the Shopify guys questions. And what I would do is I would prepare a kick-ass question, like super difficult so that I kind of knew that the Shopify people would probably not be able to answer it. And I would arrive there and raise my hand, ask this question, Shopify people would kind of be thrown a little bit off their feet, you know, kind of not know what to say. Everyone would be, wow, okay, this guy really knows what he's talking about, wow. And uh, then at the end, I'd have a bunch of people come to me and say, wow, you seriously know what you're talking about. Like, what do you do? What brand do you own? Like, you know, you just, what, do you, what happens? And I would literally say, I don't own a brand. I literally build and scale other brands for them. And they would say, oh, I have a brand and you seem like a cool guy, let's talk. And I'd walk away from the event with like 10, 20 people's numbers and I'd sign a couple clients throughout that week. Um, and that's because I went where the fish were. I wasn't hunting in the wrong place. And so if you're looking for e-com brands on LinkedIn, you're like this guy. Now, yes, some people have had some form of success on LinkedIn because as I said, when brands get big enough, they will go to LinkedIn. But I'm not talking about, you know, the outliers here. I'm just talking about the shortest path to success, in my opinion. Okay. And the next thing is when you are actually doing your outbound, I also just want to say that like, I'm not a fisherman. I, I don't fish at all, but I just thought this was a perfect analogy. If your fishing line literally screamed out, come to me and I'll eat you. It's unlikely that fish are actually going to go to that uh, little, I think it's called the hook, the little thing with the bait. Unlikely that fish are ever going to come to you. And that's literally what you guys are doing. Uh, you're literally sending out these emails saying, Hey, my service can do this. It's, it costs this much. Book a meeting with me. You are literally throwing out lines, screaming, come to me and I'll eat you. It's a bad, bad, bad idea. So a couple things here, provide value first. Never mention your offer, never mention your service in an outbound messaging and understand that the first step in sales is literally just to start a conversation. It's not to get them to pay. It's not to get them to book a meeting. It's literally just to get them to reply to your email or outbound message or whatever and literally just start a conversation. And once you've built enough of a relationship with them, a bullet of rapport, and you understand their, their business since you've got some context, then by all means, yes, transition them to a sales call. And the final point that I wanna make on this is the tastiest bait attracts the most fish, right? Clients should be fighting for you and your agency, not the other way around. And so when I say give value, don't give some watered down value like, hey, you know, I looked at your website and you don't have a Facebook pixel and you should probably install a Facebook pixel because of this and this reason. That's valuable, yes, especially if they don't have it, but it's not that valuable. One of the things that I did when I was starting out is I literally used to pay for a Shopify premium theme and I'd customize it as much as I could to the point where it was like a kick-ass high-performing theme and I'd give it away for free. I'd send emails to these brands and I'd say, hey, you have an awesome store, uh, awesome product, your ads are shit because you're not really doing much, but um, we can help you with that. But also I want to give you a free Shopify theme. Yeah, here's the link to it, upload it, and uh, I can help you install it if you like. 
and it will probably double your conversion just by improving your site. If someone who was a brand owner received that, they would be like, okay, wow. First of all, this is like someone giving me something probably worth a lot of money for free. Extreme value. He's not mentioning his service. He's not telling me to book a meeting, whatever. He's just giving me some free advice. That's awesome. Let me try it. I'm gonna download the file, upload it, reply to him, have a chat to him, probably thank you for the value. And that's when you have your foot in the door. Then you start transitioning them and getting a bit more information, transitioning them to a sales call. And then from there, I've done some other videos on sales. So that's it. Um, I'm gonna make a lot more videos on this because I wanna go a lot deeper into it. But in essence, I think that this is, it pretty much answers the question. I think if you're trying to sign your first agency client and you're struggling, I think this video would probably have helped you a lot um, as long as you actually implement some of the things that I'm saying. So I hope that helped. And uh, if you want, you can book in a call with me. I'd love to know more about you and your agency. It will be the first link down below. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.